Friends, welcome to Green Car Guys TV. I'm your host, John Ting. In this video, we're going to talk about the proposal by House Republicans. It just came out today, so we wanted to share with you as soon as possible. You want to stay all the way to the end, so let's get down to it. Now, number one, the focus for this bill is about the border security. As always, Republicans only care about this. They don't want to actually give a pathway to citizenship or even a pathway to have any kind of status. But they, you know, they did mention it towards the end. But the focus is on the border security on and e-verify. So in terms of border security, they're saying they basically want more money so they can continue finishing the wall. So anyways, we don't care about that. So let's move on to the pathway to citizenship. Now, the protection for dreamers are saying that, uh, you know, even if you don't have DACA per, per se, uh, but you can get a pathway through legalization, some kind of permanent status. Uh, and the first of all, they call it legalization. I don't even like how they phrase that. That's just derogatory. But they say they can get it through work, you can get it through military service, or through higher education. I'll show you in a second here what our draft that we're looking at here, because they don't actually have the text the full text available. They haven't provided all the information. So I'm just sharing with you what this says on the bullets on their draft. Friends, no, if you think you may be eligible for something right now that has nothing to do about the proposal, please click the link down below. It starts with Ting Law. Now they have another section in addition below uh, the protection for dreamers for what they call pr practical solution for the undocumented. So they have it in really at least three different parts in addition to the, for the dreamers. It's called Dignity Program, Redemption Program, and then I guess Worker Reform Program. Now, these all seem very ridiculous the way they phrase it as if someone did something wrong. So you have to fight your way back to get some kind of status. That's ridiculous. A lot of people who are undocumented have paid their taxes. Now, I, I'm sure there are a few people that don't pay their taxes, but many of my clients do. Uh, so if you have a friend that is, not, is, un, that is undocumented and haven't paid their taxes, please encourage them to do that because that will definitely make this process go more smoothly for uh, for undocumented in general. So we can show Republicans that, look, this is what's going on and you don't have to make it so difficult for people to get some kind of status. Okay, so I wanna go into more detail for you. The Dignity Program, they're talking about it taking 10 years. It basically does provide a work visa, a work permit for the undocumented who comply with all federal, state laws, and pass a criminal background check, pay back taxes, and start paying income taxes, and remain employed. So that is pretty ridiculous for them to say because a lot of my clients, like I said, are undocumented, right? And they actually do better taxes. Now, I'm, there are a few that did not, but we had to encourage them and tell them, yes, you actually do need to pay your taxes because that is a, one of the main things that judges at least look for and when they're trying to uh, find out about if a person has good moral character or not because all U.S. citizens pay their taxes, at least I hope so. But anyway, it also says that you have to pay a fine. Now, back if you heard of something called 245I that President Clinton had extended, that's basically a law that you have to, if you had a petition that was filed on behalf of you, I-130 or I-140 before April 30th, 2001 that can benefit you in the future long story short you had to pay a thousand dollar extra fine for that so i'm thinking that's what they're trying to do here look you get some kind of stash you can apply for it but you got to pay some kind of fine who knows how much it will be but i'm expecting it to be at least a thousand because back then that was 1994 and they placed a thousand dollar fine on that so thinking in terms of inflation i would be surprised as they only keep it at a thousand that money, whatever the amount is, that has not been determined yet. They're saying that that money will go into something called the American Small Business Fund. So that part I do like. At least the money is going to something specific that we know about. Back to the Dignity Program, it's actually temporary for the first 10 years. Now, so that's a very concerning part. It only says it's only for temporary as long as conditions are being met, which I believe that they're talking about paying your taxes. It says this in this program, the Dignity Program, individuals in this program will not have access to federal means tested benefits or entitlement. We'll go in more detail once we get more information. It also says that successful completion of the, the Dignity Program would provide an indefinite renewable five-year visa to maintain work permit and legal status. 
not permanent legal status, not like permanent resident status. And that is this dignity program is not for dreamers. That's a separate pathway. Now going on to the second phase called redemption program. This is for five plus years. This program they call optional. You must complete first the 10 year dignity program to start the redemption program. Okay. So it's one by one to earn the permanent status, resident status you have, then you must, you also must learn English and us civics, which I also sure you know some already because especially if you've been watching the news the past year and a half or really the last four years with president Trump in the news. The other thing to know though, is that it's saying you need to contribute. You must contribute to the local community either through volunteer work, which, but this sounds a little strange because by what they're using the words must, it sounds mandatory. So hopefully that they make it open so that you can choose whatever organization you want to volunteer with. So it says you have to uh, contribute to your local community through volunteer work or through contributions to the American small business fund, which we'll talk about in a second. Now the third program they call the guest worker reform. This is for something called H2A, which is for agricultural worker visas. Uh, and then also something called H2B. So if you're not working in the farm, uh, you, you're probably not familiar with this at all. So H2B is for other uh, type of visa as well. But in this guest worker reform, they're, they're wanting to implement something called E-Verify. E-Verify would force employers, boss, your supervisor, human resources to verify your legal status, your ability to work. Currently, it's not mandatory. There is an E-Verify, but it's not mandatory. So if you wonder why some people who are undocumented are able to work, that's one reason why. But at least you have an idea what's going on. You've been hearing me talk about the American Small Business Fund. What is it about? Here it is. Direct contributions from the Dignity and Redemption Program. Now they're saying that the initial contributions will go to something called like the PPP. And I'm sure you're familiar with that, the Paycheck Protection Program. And they're trying to fund something so that the federal government does not have to provide, uh, basically print more money out of the blue. So, and they're saying that money deposited into this PPP can go directly to American small businesses, which actually does make sense. It can, it's really like a cycle essentially to help pe to help businesses keep employees on, on the team, on the staff so they can keep paying them. Uh, so to that extent, I can understand that that's a good thing. They're using that money for a specific benefit to benefit everyone. Now it's saying that once the economy is, has recovered and the crisis is over, this money will go to workforce training initiatives to help um, U.S. citizens transition to different careers. In that sense, I'm thinking also military veterans because I know it's been difficult for some veterans to uh, get a job or get different skills in the civilian workforce. Okay, friends, well, here it is. Here's a dignity proposal draft. So it's only one page so far, okay? It's only a bullet list. Once we get the text of the bill, the whole length document, okay, we have a tracker on the congress.gov website so that as soon as it is introduced, we will let you know what exactly is in there word for word, okay? That, well, of course, we'll give you a summary, don't worry. Friends, if you're new to our channel and you enjoyed our content, please subscribe down below, click the like button, and please share this video with your friends. It will greatly appreciate it. We're really trying to get, until next time, please continue wearing your mask. Take care.